Hello and welcome back to the Tin Barn. I'm Pragmatic Lee and as you can see we're outside the Tin Barn today. Um, many of you have seen this tractor in some, uh, some of my previous videos. I had mentioned it. Uh, it's a 1967 uh, John Deere 1020. My daddy bought it when, it was, uh, when the tractor was about 10 years old when he got it. Uh, but it had been setting up for a little over 10 years, almost 10 and a half years. Uh, I had been using it, but the fuel tank developed a big leak in it. So I parked it, took the fuel pump tank off, uh, tried to get it fixed, uh, thought I did have it fixed. But before I could put it back on, uh, I developed some heart issues and had to have some heart surgery. And for first one thing led to another. And I never got back to the tractor until back in the back this summer. I got it up here to the house and started working on it. Uh, uh, got uh, I wound up having to buy a new fuel tank for it. The other one was just beyond uh, use. Put a new fuel line on it. Uh, I had the carburetor rebuilt. I did a full tune-up, points, plugs, uh, condenser, uh, rotary button, uh, distributor cap, plug wires and she does pretty good now. Low idle still needs some adjustment on the carburetor. When uh, things warm up, I'll get my buddy that did the carburetor rebuilt, uh, get him over here and get him to, to tune the, the uh, idle uh, adjustment on it. But what today's video is going to be about, uh, I've just recently picked up an, another implement uh, for it, the three-point hitch. Some people will say it's the uh, most useful imp implement you can have with a tractor. Uh, having grown up on a farm, I take exception to that because uh, you can't plow fill with it, uh, you can't plant with it, and you can't cultivate with it. But for Regular home use, which I'll be using this uh, tractor for now, just running around doing odd jobs. I don't think it can, uh, this implement, I don't think it can be beat. So let me get the camera moved around and I'll show you what we're talking about. The generic name for this implement is uh, called a carry-all. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, this particular one is made by King Cutter, uh, made in the USA. This King Cutter is located in Alabama make a lot of uh, farm implements but like I say this is called a carry-all and it works similar to a forklift uh, and some people uh, use these just like it is slide a pallet over the bottom forks and done with it they just use it to haul stuff around uh, I'm gonna go just a little bit further I'm gonna uh, floor the bottom and the back I'm not gonna put ends on it I did uh, look on YouTube and there are a lot of folks that, uh, uh, or there's several videos on YouTube of people uh, doing their own version of uh, dressing up the, uh, these king cutter co uh, carry-alls. Um, some of them put ends on them, uh, in particular for hauling firewood. Uh, they'll make racks for the chainsaws, rakes, shovels, pitchforks. All various implements. Uh, mine is going to be probably the simplest one you'll see out there, other than just someone sliding a pallet on the forks. All I'm going to do is, is floor the bottom and floor the back. Uh, I do not want to limit myself to the length of what I can carry uh, by any means, because probably the first thing I'm going to haul with this is a freezer that's up at my mother's house. Uh, uh, many of you know as well, my mother passed away about a year and a half ago now. The house is not really inhabitable anymore, the one I grew up in. It's just 200 yards up the road up here. But my niece is going to uh, be building on that lot in the next couple of months. And we've all got out of, what, out of the house what we wanted, uh, everything from the windows to cabinet doors. But uh, there's a freezer locker up there that my, my niece wants. It's about six foot long. And so that'll probably be the first thing I'll haul on this once I get it done. But what I'm going to do is uh, do these with uh, two by sixes.
uh, one at the bottom here and I'm going to space it out. Alright, that's the first one in position now. And what I'm going to do is reach up under the bottom and mark where the hole is, or where the hole should be. I'm going to be installing this with half inch carriage bolts. Alright, now to space these out, I've got some uh, three quarter inch spacers that I'm going to put in between each piece. I'll use a straight edge to try to keep these in line. Now I'm going to drill, mark and drill these just like I did the first piece. And I'll do a third and fourth board. When I get ready for the fifth board, I'll bring it back. It's going to be just a little bit different. All right, I got four two by sixes down. I hadn't, uh, I hadn't tightened any of the bolts on them yet. This last piece is actually a two by eight. The reason I went with a two by eight instead of a two by six, uh, I measured these before, before I went to the building supply to pick up the material and saw that the three quarter inch was going to space those reasonably equal and to use a two by eight on the end. The reason I'm going with a two by eight here, I want this edge, material edge, to be even with the end of the uh, of the forks, so I've already laid this one out and marked it. We'll drill it. All right. Before I start on the back, I want to say a little something about. Uh, uh, leaving this space in between. If you watch any of the other videos on YouTube about the carry-alls, several of them have jammed the boards up tight. They use a combination of 2x6s, 2x8s, 2x10s, whatever uh, material they had or whatever material they figured to put these boards tight. But this implement is going to be left sitting outside. Uh, the tractor will always be under the shelter unless it's broke down in the field somewhere. It will be under the shelter. Implements set outside. Even though this is pressure treated wood, it will still absorb moisture. And if it does, it's going to swell. Any of you that's ever built a, a ramp to your doorsteps and jam the boards up tight, you know what I'm talking about. Boards, the boards are going to swell. Over a period of time, they're going to draw up a little bit more. But I'm not going to be hauling sand or dirt like on this. If I do, I'll put some a piece of plywood down or something. So I don't need the boards tight. I need them to be able to breathe, if you will. So before we start on the back, or as I start on the back, I'll show you something I did for that. If I started out with a, a whole tube of six here, as you can see, or I think you can probably see the hole is only about an inch and a half here because the, the first back piece will be sitting on an inch and a half. And by the time I got up a couple of these holes up here, the hole would be in the space, in the three quarter inch space. 
So what I did was take one of my two by sixes and trim it down. I took an inch and a half off of it. So basically what I'm doing is starting this edge the same distance this edge from the metal corner. So I'm going to mark these off just like I did the others. I'll bring you back when I get ready to put the, uh, the final piece on, on the top. And just like on the, the floor down here, on the back, I space this out so that this 2 by 8 at the top will be even with the uh, carry-all uprights, or it, in this case, maybe an eighth of an inch higher. Alright, I think everything's lined up on the back now. Uh, I think it's time we tighten some bolts. All right, I'm going to put my spacers back in the bottom. Be sure each one of these I left a little slack in, in the uh, hole size. They're half inch bolts, but I drilled them out five eighths just so I could move it a little bit if necessary. But I'll put my spacers back in and we'll tighten up these, these bottom bolts. Check my Okay, there's one more thing I want to do to this before I uh, call it finished. But uh, I realized when I ran in there just now to get the punch to, to get my spacer blocks out, I didn't have the screws necessary. What I'm going to do is put a 2 before 4 down this side here, keeping the inside edge flush, and down across the bottom too. The purpose of that is, as I said earlier, even though this is treated wood, it's going to absorb some moisture, uh, especially over the years as it gets drier. And these ends are going to warp to some degree. But what I want to do is put a 2x4 down this outside edge, keeping these edges together. But what I don't have is any galvanized deck screws to put that 2x4 on. These bolts in here are galvanized bolts. If you don't use galvanized and treated material, the arsenic uh, or substitute arsenic that's used now to treat this lumber will eat up a, a regular silver uh, bolt. You need to use galvanized bolts in treated material and also galvanized deck screws uh, when you're, when you're uh, screwing into treated wood. But I'll get those, put those two befores on. It's just a matter of cutting them the length and screwing them on. I suspect this is going to be my last video for 2020. Uh, as I'm sure is the case with all of you, it's been an unusual year, very unusual year. But uh, so far, uh, we've had one casualty in my immediate family. Brother-in-law passed away from COVID uh, a couple months ago. 
Uh, other than that, uh, my wife and I and children and grandchildren uh, have all managed to avoid it so far. Uh, I do know five people right now that have COVID. Four, four of them are getting along pretty good at home. One of them is on a ventilator in, in ICU up at the local hospital. But last I heard, he was getting a little better. But I encourage you to be safe. Uh, hopefully next year is going to be better for all of us in many aspects. Uh, there's been many good parts about 2020, but there's been some tragedies as well. And I hope you enjoyed this little uh, uh, unusual video for 10 more in time uh, on the carry-on. Uh, I'm sure over the coming months and years, uh, I'll get a lot of use out of it. And as I said at the beginning of the video, this is probably going to be the simplest one that you'll you'll see on on YouTube. But take care, and I'll see you next year.